beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. Please pray from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success Systems, Part 1. Success Systems Part 1 Success Systems Part 1 The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements the requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success number two to unveil to you the laws the principles the secrets the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from god's standpoint it's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit it's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful it's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um, I pray that God will help us. Two scriptures very quickly, and then we'll take the course content. Second, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Please, media, you need to work with us very, very fast tonight. Media, help us. Second Peter 1, verse 8. And then we'll look at Genesis 39, verse 2 to 6. It says, For if these things be in you, what things? certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things abound in you 
and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse six and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in joseph's hand everybody say trust and he knew not what and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored help us tonight in the name of jesus christ write down the things we are going to be considering in this series please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are a few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom what is god's idea of a successful person the concept of success in the kingdom number three we're going to look at the concept of laws and principles The concept of laws and principles can I continue number four definition of terminologies there's too much confusion so we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success definition of terminologies and then number four number five thank you the laws of success the laws of success we're going to be examining the laws and then number six will end with a very strong impartation and trust god to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives praise the lord if you believe it say amen yeah. now statistically speaking statistically speaking five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets 
a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself is a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying i am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you I love you too much to mislead you and one of the graces God has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance so anything you hear that you do not understand just be patient by God's grace I'm a good builder every house is built by some man he says but God is the builder of all and so we will not build a house that is lopsided we'll build a house that stands solid on the rock no matter what shakes it it remains there say amen failure is real brothers and sisters there are pastors who are failures regardless of their spirituality there are churches that are failing and have failed some of us here seated right now it's an uncomfortable truth but right now if you will admit you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. You see failure in the face of failed marriages. A man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity failure is real it lives among us we see it in the faces of our dear loved ones we see it in the frustration of our parents you watch them and you know they are frustrated some of them are too arrogant to admit it so they act as though they are still in control 
but many have been forced painfully so to admit that there is something they are missing many people have been forced amplified by the recession to swallow their pride and admit i'm not getting something right nobody becomes a success by accident nobody becomes a success by chance by luck yesterday i was ministering at a crusade and i gave an instance i think I've, I've given that instance here and i want to repeat that example watch this if i make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then i sleep and i march will gravity forgive me and say no i know you were joking you were not serious next time be serious no gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake every time i violate that law of gravity i pay for it and i do so immediately and sometimes i may not have a second chance again this is how success is and this is how failure is listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two he calls it the principles of jesus number one he calls it the life of god number two he calls it the laws of god everybody say the life of god say the person of jesus say the principles of jesus and mike mudok teaches that the person of jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with god but it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now are we together now so i can be born again filled with the holy spirit if i die i'm going to heaven if jesus comes i'm going to heaven i can live a life of peace whether in plenty or lack because his person has consumed me i have conformed to the image of the christ experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of jesus but the principles of jesus everybody say the principles of jesus that means i can be born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the holy spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the holy spirit and become a total failure in life such a possibility exists now most christians have embraced the life of god but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of god but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that jesus is not lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless of whether he has a relationship with god or not there is a dimension of the power and the ability of god that is programmed in laws so it doesn't matter who applies them there are certain dimensions that are privy 
to only believers it is only in christ that those dimensions can be obtained like peace like the joy in the holy ghost are we together now like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you're rising in character you are confirming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 a scripture just came into my spirit and i want you to see it isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 write this word down success what is the definition of success i'm i'm trying to introduce the concept of success because please look up the body of christ has had issues for a very long time there are many denominations and there are many christians some of them looking at me right now many listening to me online every time you mention the word success especially in church and to a christian there is this build up of resentment we have associated success with carnality we have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of christ those who are carnal they don't love god and want to be successful and those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth there's no such doctrine in the bible the bible says looking up to jesus not up to a denomination not up to a pastor it's important to follow us but be sure we are following christ and if at any point you are not following christ it is within your power to switch paul said follow me as i follow christ i have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings that a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation let me tell you something many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know i love the body of christ and i don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism i'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um 
mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere is an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness endorsed irresponsibility endorsed lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed so change it and use it well one to go again he didn't say be successful he says learn you must be taught he says learn to do well it's not just saying make it uh -uh. learn be studious submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well when i saw that scripture it was quite instructive learn to succeed joshua selman learn it is not in you by default learn the same way um where is he doctor it's not a doctor by default but you learn to become a doctor you learn to become an architect are we together you learn to become a mother that's why when ladies give birth for the first time their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and i will succeed look at this when you want to become a doctor what do you do you pass through the medical school correct when you want to become an engineer what do you do you pass through the engineering school when you want to become an architect what do you do you pass through the system so when you want to become a success what do you do unfortunately there is no official institution for making people successful you see why many people are failures there are many graduates because there are many universities there are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary school there are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime but there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them you are said to be successful this is the general definition of success the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal I want to become a doctor and then you pass through the system and you become a doctor with respect to that goal you are successful I want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it 
and then eventually you get married and have your children with respect to that goal you are successful so without goals there is no basis for being successful are we together now the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal is what we call success now let me give you a kingdom definition of success I've given you a general definition let's look at a kingdom definition write this down the fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment, not just any goal. If an arm robber says, I must steal, and then he steals successfully, from an earthly standpoint, we say he has succeeded. From, but from the kingdom standpoint, he's not a success. The fulfillment of your divine assignment the fulfillment of your god-given assignment is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to jesus and bless humanity is called success I'll take it again. The effective use of your life, comma, your gifts, comma, your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success. So when you use your life like a drink offering, when you use your gifts and when you use your resources, to draw men to Jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by men's standpoint you are a success are we together now the effective use of your life the effective use of your gifts the effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity to advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their Christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of God is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you're a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success the proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the father 
the proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles L A W S and then principles. I want us to examine the concept of laws and principles. Jesus, thank you. Look at me. In any other and every other aspect of our lives, we believe in laws and principles. But when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies, we do not believe that they walk by principles. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. It's a tragedy. When you go to school, you know that there are laws and principles. You are a science-based student. They teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful I will tell you where our resentment for loss came from. The imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works. This is where we got our resentment for the word laws. Great men and women of God scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt, and I believe everything that they teach, in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of Christ into the reality of Christ's finished work. Listen carefully. In an attempt to show how that the old is gone. The old testament. You know. And that we are products of this new testament now. In an attempt to help believers live the victorious life. 
we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said we have drifted to another side of the pendulum and so the average believer especially the average pentecostal charismatic believer when you hear the word laws when you hear the word principles you just reject it you don't even need to know law of what you just say no 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 i'm not under the law write this down laws are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations there are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of god's justice system laws are a reflection of god's justice system the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations it didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of god's justice system so that nobody will say god victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years People like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry. Brothers and sisters, that ministry was built by laws. It was not just built by emotions. Many great corporations across the world. I don't know what the oldest um, retail outfit is in Nigeria. The oldest restaurant in Nigeria. But we have very great um, restaurants across the nation of the earth. Right? Like Colonel Sanders and his Kentucky Fried Chicken. And a number of people walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this 
this is nestle water how many of you know there's nestle water in lagos how many of you know there's nestle water in ibadan how many of you know there's nestle water in maiduguri the taste is almost the same if not the same the packaging and everything when you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it you would think they took the one here there there is consistency in results there is sustainability there is predictability there are many workers those who package this in lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone but they are all governed by the same laws so their results are the same correct thank you um pastor femi please come my friend please come two of you please stand here now look how smart they are both looking stand here please now look at this pastor femi has a knotted tie and this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this tie would not say Lila, i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief not this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true the correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success we had a great time over at bida um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and i'm sure some of them are following it was such a great time as god always does in the meetings and i had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions man of god what is the secret to your anointing and i in my mind i thought i said if i tell these people now they will not believe it you see that as i'm speaking to you right now somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu you look at a graduate from unilag bring all of them together haven't never met themselves but they were submitted to the same laws they will talk as though they know they've known themselves for years correct that means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are all of us will call and they'll say are you experiencing the same result you say exactly as said do you believe that honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success Exhaust is is success important somebody may be asking me be patient and ask me five years from now remain the way you are and keep going i will be glad to answer you five years from now when you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now 
when you watch the pain when you watch three children stand before you and say daddy we are hungry when you watch your child become an arm robber simply because of failure then you will ask that question again is success important it's a terrible thing please be careful how you listen to people don't criticize men of God don't criticize leaders even business experts be careful right now we have all kinds of business experts anyone just chokes himself with tie holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere and teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense and in the end of it you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used and then at the end of it you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful I desire to succeed with my life I have tasted a bit of it it gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry I know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry I know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of God and not have anybody to bless today by the grace of God we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting I have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and I know they work they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. One of, I think is I think his patients, I spot her here. She sent me a text, very, very funny text. And um, she's a student in the school of ministry. And I'd been teaching them a number of things. And then she, she went to Zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. According to her, she was shaking and wondering whether it would happen. And I mean, in minutes, that person was shaking and blasting in tongues. And she called me and said, my God, look at this thing. And then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly. Predictability. Predictability. There are keys. Nobody is born rich. Nobody is born blessed. Are we together? He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Your, you can live out like that or you can change i made a decision that i will change it's a decision that i made and i want you tonight if you have not made that decision to make a strong decision i'm taking it gradually with us because i want us to understand this let's define terminologies right we're going to define 14 words that will be playing around within this series 14 words that have been misunderstood i don't want to make the mistake of believing that when i mention a word all of us understand that this is what i'm saying write it down the first word i've already defined it success the accomplishment of a worthy goal am i boring you please write the second word i want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure what is failure write it down that's the second word i'll be very very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray jesus we bless you failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective you are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as unmerited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace 
that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down i had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i list as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is 
the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access <clears throat> grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as the 
find in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what I call works. Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works. We need to define this because I'm going to be playing around with these words. And um, it's important that all of us, when you hear it, you know what I'm saying. Number what now? Let's hurry up. I will rush now. Number six, excellence. Let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections 
but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness or familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension Eleven, wisdom we're almost there Eleven, wisdom correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us do you know what do you know what i'm imagining i'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say apostle thank you thank you thank you no no look you will be too blessed to do it even if you don't like me you will do it you will turn back one day i'll come to your house and when others are languishing i will see you together with your children giving god praise and say today is a day off we are just worshiping and blessing his name and people will say are you in nigeria you say no i i am only here but we, we 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 sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order remember i used to say this thing years ago believe it oh believe it i imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying mama i know you did not make it in this life but i have a surprise cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say mama the car you did not drive this is it let the devil do anything he would do do you think your mother will be happy you are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members clothes because of rent i must kill you now how much is it? 250 000. that's all right that's all right in two minutes is there god bless you not alone 
I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, this is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12. Prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper two more definitions and we're there number 13 goals g-o-a-l-s goals what are goals clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes what are goals clearly defined desires objectives and outcomes Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14, the last word. Value. V-A-L-U-E. Value. What is the definition of value? Write it down. Point of difference. What is the definition of value? Point of difference another definition your uniqueness another definition your skill so what is value your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value i repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying god is called value Take a deep breath. You have tried. You have been writing. Some of you, that's a key to drive laziness. You've not done this in a long time. I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many. I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight i gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain listen i gave you 14 definitions that will make your church your ministry your group excel or fail i gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become write this down success is predictable I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful. Success is predictable now. I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed. There are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail. It's a very sad truth. They will be offended and they will think, it's are you God? And then you see that you really failed. Failure is also predictable. Write it down. So success is predictable. Semicolon. Failure is also predictable. I can look at your life, brothers and sisters, and I can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior. You are going to be a very great word addict. But I know that as far as success is concerned, 
you may not be very successful i can look at your life and i know that you are going to be a very rich man you will buy the jets and the rolls royces but you will never be a spiritual man i can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came You know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side I felt, look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the Bible says A and B and C. Everybody stand up. Worship team, you are bringing 50,000. Prayer band, you are bringing 1 million. <laughs> Beggar. <laughs> you are not praying for nothing. 1 million. Leaders, you are bringing 2 million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you yes it will never happen in this ministry where i will say please raise offering for me so that i can eat well no you know what we call escape velocity in physics where you have gone past certain things it's not pride it will never happen again till jesus comes i found my way to better days I found my way to better days. For many of you tonight, you're on your way to better days. Let them laugh at you. You're on your way to better days. Status is Prophesy to yourself. for one minute and say lord i am truly changing i'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact. 
Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we've had all the peripheral business and I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents for some of you is that you were thrown outside for some of you is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it for some of you is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat for some of you is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success for some of you there are men of god probably listening to me you have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection listen if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things if you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. When I look at people who say, God forbid, over my dead body, I will never do this and that, I tell them, keep quiet. You don't know the pressure that failure forces people. Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you would do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia, years ago when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart, and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father, I think, was not working. And then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded. I, I don't know if it was whatever it is, but it was a very serious issue. And the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief burden bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me she said the boss looked at her own mother and said you are not a, a small girl you know what to do if you want to raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man. Now, yeah, I know you are, we have, we can shout in church, ah, I won't do it. Don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot. When somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night, he never planned it. That's what pressure means. When the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened? Do you know that after the man paid that woman her money, the shame, she had to still quit the job and leave. When the lady told me, I said, oh God, what is this? We are here jumping in church saying, since I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. That is such a lie. I've seen many righteous people forsaken. You know? I've seen many of their seed beg for bread. We sing it by faith and I believe it. But I have seen many righteous people, such as our parents, such as your brother and your sister. You know them. They love God. They have been dejected and forsaken. They forsook loves and good things left them. Success is predictable. Failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success you can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in, in a way and a dimension that you have never seen to obey these laws and excel let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight ready the laws of success 
Thank you, Jesus. Ready? The first law of success, the law of relationships. Write it down. The law of relationships. Ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life. Embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm. Everybody say the law of relationships. Shout it. The law of... Write this down. Success is highly relationship dependent. Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything, I don't care what it is, anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it money can buy a house relationships can buy a house money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobble dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and he entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life. Listen, if you use money to buy everything in life, you are not wise. No. It is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life. It has nothing to do with being rich. That's the mistake our parents made. I love our parents, don't get me wrong. Some of you here are parents, we love you, we honor you with all our hearts. Most people think you only succeed when you start having salary, 100,000 coming. And they now say, wow, I have 100,000. Then they have a need. They ignore relationships. And something that would be cheaply paid for, they would have to look for money and pay for it. I have paid for many things in my life using relationship. Relationship like a debit card. You can use it and withdraw many other things. You can use it and pay for many other things. Relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms. I am connected to people. Listen, connectivity is a key to success you must be connected relationships can help you access anointings relationships can help you access endorsements relationships can help you access favor 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 the major ingredient in success is favor but it takes relationships We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC, 
We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has paid for. Yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances. I'm not talking about finances necessarily, but I'm just using it as a case study. Relationships. People have blessed me today purely based on relationships. Not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of God. Just to bless. Do you know that somebody in Zaria today has the heart to bless you, but you do not have the connection? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things that were done that I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there. Many of us have been trivializing relationships. That's why we keep hustling. The Bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them. He does not know the road to the city. By the grace of God, I understand the ministry of destiny helpers. The ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship. God has used me as a destiny helper to many. God has used many people as destiny helpers to me. Hallelujah. Cheap victories that many of us lose. Cheap victories. Some of our parents do not know anybody. And so you pay for everything. And when you want to use money alone to be successful, a day will come you will have all the money in your life. And you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do. Are we together? There are people, you know, one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned from my father. My father is a man who was wealthy in relationships. I used to think he was just, you know, you know, just someone who just likes people. But now that I've grown, I have seen the wisdom. Relationship paid many bills for my father. Relationships. Let me tell you something. Relationship is an investment. The same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship. All this something for nothing is, is a joke. There are many of us, we have this self-flattery 
they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text message as if you die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly he said are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy a jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah 
and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one oh they are ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense i say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one trouser two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame Who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say i prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing 
and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course i i, I love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, don't, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god Are we together? There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. There is no day. I say it, may God forgive me if I'm lying, but it's true. There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. You cook by yourself. You wash your clothes by yourself. You intercede for yourself. No relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you're looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age we're not thinking like them that means most likely they'll be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you 
when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since I paid for the palace when I could afford it. I show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness. So you can see somebody in the future come. You see somebody in the future, no charisma, no anointing, yet favor will never stop leaving him. Everybody knows him. We are about leaving Bida today and a man of God who also came for administration. The man of God came for administration. I was about to enter the car, let's go. And then um, the protocol stopped me and said, please, I need to attend to him. I turned to him and I said, hello, sir, I don't know you. He said, sir, you don't need to know me. I came for administration and I had you were around. I stopped. The guy was holding a seat in his hand. Say relationships. There are people who will be talking. Who should we lift here? And somebody will say, please, I have one daughter. I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray I will stop here Lord one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting 
you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value I have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to us to go and scrub toilet if can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is a lot doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere caught them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys You are revealing to me the keys. You are revealing to me the keys. 
Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Come be God. Many of you don't know this gentleman. You see this guy? This guy would never fail in life. Ask me why. Because when we started, listen carefully. When he and I started, the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his slab. Huh? This gentleman, the same way he's holding his guitar, that's how he, he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing. And he, will, everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach, but he will have to stand with me. There's another dear lady, she was the one who would hold light for me. That's her work. She did it joyfully, bring her touch light. Every time I was going to read a scripture, she would do it joyfully. Those two people will never, never beg for bread, not when I'm alive. Yes, no, 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 it's not amen. This is a reality. I'm serious about it. I can mention names of people. I told you about my principal who I went to visit early this year and I looked at him. He had become an old man now. And I said, God, in my lifetime, please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me. It's a covenant I made with myself. What did he do? He believed in me. I remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said, you are smart. He had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down. And I had come from a background of so much complex and pain. He made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said I should play keyboard for them. And that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from. I was not born this way. Never forget those who believed in you when you were nothing. You see, let me tell you something about greatness. As you start rising, levels will change. Don't let your mind change. Because you will start seeing psychophants, people who you meet on the journey, and they are there to make it look like at your level, should you now be relating with these ones. This woman used to sweep your house. Now you have become a big woman. You are even going to marry a millionaire. Just find 2,000 and let her go away. Please, this smelly woman, not your class. A wise person will say, if she could sweep my house when I had nothing, she deserves to sweep my palace. She even deserves a palace of her own. Relationships. Anything money can buy, relationship can buy it. You have been paying for too many things using finances. Start using relationships. Lift your voice and cry. Because God bless you, I love you. Thank you. Lift your voice and say, Lord, connect me. Connect me. Connect me. Pray. Connect me. Shato Salaka de Bregadia. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationships. Strategic relationships. Covenant relationships. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me? Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, your, your son, you can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. It's a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness on offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friend. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Listen, 
Pastor Femi come. Many of you don't know why you see me stand with Pastor Femi. It's not just because Pastor Femi is my son in the gospel. Let me tell you. Do you know before he became a pastor, Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for washing team. This washing team you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They would finish the hazard. He would help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God lifts those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar. Humble himself. Even when he became a pastor, there were times he was playing bass guitar. One day I had to tell him, no, it's okay. The person assisting him now, Francis. Francis is a friend of Charles. Francis was in protocol. Look at how God is lifting people except you. God is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are. Big money sin. There are people who humble themselves to serve. There are people in this ministry. The level of grace they have, they can be geos of great ministries. Yet you see them doing very frail activities. Some of them are in protocol, running around. He resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You see what God has done in his life today. God bless you. Aaron, come. Let me give you. Come, Aaron. Many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of ENI was Aaron. This gentleman you see standing here. When we were doing crusades, nothing to write home about. Owing everybody everywhere. Just moving by faith. It was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses. I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things. This guy you see, Aaron. Yet till today, the way he is, you still see him greet some of the leaders. Some of these people are young. They are younger than him by far in age, younger than him in experience and all of that. And you see him still act and where there is an opportunity, you see him serve with all his heart. Aaron is one person who has served me and served God with his life. And I've made a vow and a covenant, no matter what happens, I will never watch him and his children beg for bread. Thank you, Aaron. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see, as of 2010, she was a member of protocol. Protocol, when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Serving with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, look at their children. All copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God, to see the relationship. Not all relationships are worth keeping. Not all relationships are worth protecting. But I tell you, there are relationships that are worth keeping forever. Assignment as you go back home today, 
or tomorrow, go and write the list of the five most valuable relationships in your life and begin to invest unashamedly in them. Five people that God has brought in your life that you know you need, no matter what it is. You don't have to invest in everybody. There are people after 20 years, it's still a waste. But let me tell you, there are relationships you must protect at all costs. Some of us are penny wise and pound foolish. We can destroy today or try to enjoy today. We destroy a relationship that is long lasting. I have seen people, I have counseled people who destroyed relationship with great people over trivial matters. Matters of marriage, matters of money, matters of job, matters of reputation, matters of ego. Bro, great relationships with people. I know great men today who have vowed in my presence that they will never help certain people because of their attitude. Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predetermined counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me. But this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen. Please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happening going on here. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone or question one. And then comes and the word comes and the result comes out and is in 4.8. Ah, oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. 
Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha, he said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my father has died, my mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm sitting Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be alive. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. He said, weep not when the boob is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. Is able to restore, and let me tell you something God can restore fast, He can restore fast. 430 
30 years in captivity one night god said that's all when god arises el gibor the mighty man when he shakes himself and stands up and says i want to leave david down let me tell you i don't care what which way i have seen god lift people who were not even prepared I ju he just chose that i want to make a specimen with this person it doesn't take time it doesn't take time we're about to pray I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is. And return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call.
you something with prophecy. The prophetic is very powerful. You can be acting, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just moving here. It is within the power of God. I have done this little, crazy, foolish, prophetic act. It's time for those who this word, you see, this thing I've done. Hold on, please. I'm not everybody. There are a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the that time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you.
this is what God is doing. Let's just flow with the Spirit. Literally, there are some of you, you are going to feel a wind blow around you. And a garment is like a change of women. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. And he was standing. And Satan wanted to rain an accusation. And he said, is this not a rod that I've taken from out of fire? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all those that God is changing their garment, may that anointing come right now. Yes, 
yesterday before failure came. So you are even afraid of it. No. No. You were given 500,000 and you went and bought goods for your business. Then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. I once again separate you from your past. I separate you from your past. I separate you from your past. It goes and goes forever. It goes and goes forever. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming there. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you. Because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. Inside and outside, especially overflow too. The one and the other. I'm just seeing rings of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this category of people that nothing is working for. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family, and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. Salvation has come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, sir. Where are you from? Odo, Odo State. Odo is what? This one I'm saying, Akure or Odo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes, sir. And because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally yes. right now. Who is Lekon? I want to pray for you. Come. 
listen. Just one touch from the Lord will change your story. Lift your hands. Lay come. Overflow. He's in the overflow. Where are you? Please stand up, my brothers. Stand up. What's your name? Lincoln, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. You stand here. Your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. This lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's hand. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has to be Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the sick. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you, something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here. Where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. Hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Where is she? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. That's what stand up. That's what they told you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because you people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You're a very nice person to come in. 
the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting here. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon the Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. I want everybody to look at this brother very well, know his face, because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand, your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC Kefi. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kevin. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been there. I was together in your program. In soup, two days program, you came at KF. Oh, you were there the, at yes, the meeting. You were the part of the committee people yes, there. Yes. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Hi. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You want something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kevin. Zuru Shabalakatabalata. Come and receive your miracle, my dear. of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come no woman. There's no woman. call the person's name now huh? no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son this is the one here in the okay you're standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with the child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe. What's her name? Her name is Adam Alisa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Winter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. Oh, I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Okay. Okay. Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. Mama, that's it. 
is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We are from Plateau State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aiki, she may get him. Kano. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. But this is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for him. Mama, let me pray for you. Also, diabetes, fibroid, and, um, and, and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fibroid from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. A loud shout. is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never to be told. Just lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands as I minister deliverance to you. It doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no, the operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. One. Si 
physical rings on your hand physical rings then it will disappear who is that there's someone here like that please quickly let me pray for you don't be embarrassed i want to pray for you the lord just gave me a revelation sometimes you look at your hand and you see you think it's a vision rings like ring on your hand you started seeing it in your dreams but now physically sometimes you see it whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing, this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now, while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows. Those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know you always.
just hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside inside please if you are here don't be embarrassed i want to help you end this i know there are many people but there is a specific person god is talking to me about let's just flow as the holy spirit to speak in please that gentleman i want you to come out here and i want to lay my hands and end it you are tired of it but you can't stop no matter what you do that's what you spend your little money on and this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny where are you let's appreciate him Look at me. Jesus said, He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are, if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one. But I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. Are still coming let's give them one more minute since god is already talking to them now let's just take advantage of the anointing here apostle i don't take it all the time still join them you take it the most important thing is that you take it even if it's not all the time you take it join them and let god help you look at me brothers and sisters i'm your friend i love you with all my heart like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only 
we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We'll forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we are helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is no body, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I cause you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come out now. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. Make your way out. Make the place. Make the Bible and pray. See why we pray for people. It 
has pleased the Lord to use us to bring the healing power of God to people and we're very happy we'll continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we're going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there someone will come to pray for you now praise the lord while they are doing this how many of us came with our prayer request hallelujah now what i want you to do very quickly those online you can post it online and uh, we're going to connect with it by faith if you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones do it quickly the ushers are going to be waving the a basket please let's do it orderly just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you you'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray very quickly praise the lord pastor jimmy will be outside overflow one pastor jimmy and pastor femi overflow one he's going to be praying pastor alpha you go to overflow two um together with mike mike you follow him overflow two overflow three benga and promise two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there praise the lord we'll do it that way father together we release a corporate anointing for miracles signs and wonders we declare and declare right now that as we begin to minister to god's people do a quick walk let incurable situations go let cancers go let hiv go in the name of jesus christ anoint everyone oh god that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of jesus christ okay god bless you please let's go very quickly we have let's try to see how we can cover this in 15 20 minutes are we together now god bless you lord thank you for healings thank you for miracles worship him you help us bless us in jesus name please accept listen please accept the people laying hands on you ask you you don't need to tell them what is wrong with you just stand by faith praise god the prophetic is at work if there is need to prophesy or talk to you just receive by faith it doesn't mean we have to touch the area just believe by faith you go and check yourself or call your loved ones faith hallelujah this is not a ritual that we do this is a revelation that god gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of god's people no matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the lord these are the things that attempt to say jesus did not die these are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believing. Believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. They will still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Jabala. Now arise, oh Lord, will you come to your resting place? Let the arms of your mind, and then we will rejoice as we close in your righteousness.
Signed unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare right now every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God 
for direction for the next level. Beginning from tonight, receive encounters that give you direction. Those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts. I decree and declare right now. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. here you are not walking in spiritual gifts Paul said I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy something is coming upon you now I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three oh God according to the faith of your people let there be a distribution right now one Two, three, take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Whatever has destroyed your prayer life, so that your, the fervency of your prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, I found those calls to come back alive. I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight 
the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to throw your blessings to your life now I command you to throw your blessings to your life now listen did not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. finances whatever makes this thing hard for you I cause that spirit now in Jesus name I decree and declare illumination grace to know what to do and grace to succeed at whatever you do receive it in the name of Jesus for those who are students whether on campus the university or any other campus I declare most of you are on break now you are about to resume as you resume in the name of Jesus I put life to your academics I command missing scripts to be found I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected in the name of Jesus as you prepare to write your exams I prophesy like rain from four points upwards I prophesy like rain hear what I'm saying I prophesy like rain from four points upwards in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a job in the name of Jesus between now and the next 30 days may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family I cause accidents I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again thank you for lifting Let 
let us go without even an opportunity. Please, everyone stand. Any of you Let's honor this altar call quickly. Help, help those under the anointing. There are people here standing and saying, Man of God, I want to make it right with Jesus. Some of you gave your hearts to him. But for some reason, things began to go haywire. And you're saying, man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Those coming from outside, please. Protocol, help them. Clear the way for them so that they come quickly. Quickly. Two. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Run to Jesus Christ. Overflow. One, two, three, four. Everywhere, please. Quickly. Three. Three. coming please double up double up rush rush run and come we're out of time but this is a decision that is eternal come and encounter jesus god bless you come and encounter the power of god come and have a fresh start with him he that did not withhold his only son but offered him freely how much more with him shall he give us all things keep coming three four Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight i've heard your word and i believe in you i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that jesus is lord over my life i believe that god raised him from the dead and i declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life I pray for you that you will know the Lord like never before. I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. Appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.